Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Greed Up. I hope you all are doing really well. Let's quickly start with today's session. This is the second part on Puritan Age. Whatever we are able to complete uh, in the class, of course, in the previous lecture, we looked at the introduction. I would be sharing the PDF right after this class on the Telegram channel and uh, or by nine o'clock rather uh, on the Telegram channel. Also, additionally, uh, I will be sending you two PDFs. So one would, of course, be the introductory PDF and containing details on John Milton and over and above I will be giving you one more reading uh, for Puritan age as well as like you know your 17th century period prior to uh, the coming of the restoration period as well as even if we are not able to cover all the aspects I will still give you the handouts uh, of all the other important writers who are a part of the Puritan age so that you can completely revise this age properly at your end also and yesterday I had told you in the last class I had told you that how in this particular particular period you have to look at John Milton you have to look at your Cavalier poets you have to look at your metaphysical poets and some important prose writers who were writing during the time right there were biography writers as well as well as you were having prose writings that was developing and we would be discussing all those in greater detail also okay so let's quickly start I hope there are no problems in defining the term Puritan right now so <clears throat> yesterday we saw how Puritans were a political group of people who were coming out of your Protestantism, as well as we saw about Presbyterianism. Presbyter, presbyters were the elderly people whom Puritans thought uh, should look after the church. So all those details, of course, we've looked at. We looked at the good side of the Puritans. They wanted democracy. They wanted reform. They wanted church reform. They wanted ecclesiastical reforms to be taking place. But at the same time, because they had become severely austere as well as strict disciplinarians therefore we see that people are not liking their rigidity people are not welcoming the fact that they are absolutely strict when it comes to following discipline so those are of course the important details that we must remember and remember I asked you to read about Hawthorne how Hawthorne Nathalie Hawthorne the writer of the Scarlet Letter telling you the story of Esther Prynne is trying to tell you the story of uh, like you know how uh, people like the Puritans who were rebellious are going against the rebellion of Hester Prynne. Additionally, we must remember <clears throat> when we are talking about Scarlet Letters writer Hawthorne, Hawthorne is also considered to be a Puritan renegade. So those details are also extremely important. Uh, going further, of course, we will also look at Puritan literature. So your early American writings is Puritan. Uh, your metaphysical poetry is partially Puritan. John Milton is a proper Puritan. Uh, then additionally, besides these conventional tracks, we're also having certain uh, pieces which are either critical of Puritanism all right. Uh, so those details also we'll look at later. That will be like, you know, critique of Puritan literature. Okay. Now here coming on uh, to the, the most important part, we're, we're going to first look at all the important writers. So let's quickly kickstart by looking at the writings of John Milton. Yesterday, we spoke about the fact that, you know, how John Milton, who was educated at Cambridge, Christ College, Cambridge, was called Lady of Christ. He was called Lady of Christ. Why he was called Lady of Christ? Because he was extremely fair and additionally he would spend a lot of time uh, in the pursuit of knowledge he wouldn't be so engaged in the physical activities he was more uh, aware about the fact that he has to read he spent a lot of time reading and he always had this intense desire to become a great poet and to write about a great theme so that was clearly his main focus. That was clearly his entire purpose that he had. All right. We had discussed how Tennyson called him God gifted organ voice of England. He was the voice of England, clearly. Right. Milton is popularizing uh, the entire convention of English writing. And we also discussed how John Milton is called the last great Elizabethan writer. So those are, of course, the points that we must remember. Now, what you need to extremely be aware about you know uh, try to understand that why net gives so much of importance to a person like john milton because john milton was very clear he was a strict disciplinarian in terms of his entire outlook towards his career he was very sure that he wants to engage himself in the craft of poetry 
right so when you're looking at john milton you know he had a strong resolve at the very beginning that he wants to create something which would be as big as the magnum opus of paradise lost so clearly we of course have paradise lost in almost all the, either the ba bachelor's or the master's syllabuses but we must know that you know the writer of paradise lost is having this entire perception of leaving a work that lives beyond his time right it's been over five centuries that milton has passed away but we still read his works so that clearly shows the mastery of the craft in terms of milton was writing look at these lines when i was a yet a child no childish play to me was pleasing all my mind was serious to learn and know right i don't know if you can see this but you know this line after this is all my mind was serious to learn and know i will just hide the the mark for a minute so that you can see this shows you this shows you that you know milton was a person who was clearly clearly uh, extremely emphatic about the fact that he had this this desire so you know many a times when you're watching these interviews of upsc civil servants uh, like you know aspirants who clear the exams they'll always say that you know i was in class 7th when my mom told me you should become a upsc you should become an is officer or you know if you're looking at the interviews they'll be like okay at a very young age our parents started giving us competition success review so the same thing is happening with milton even milton is a person who is getting trained he's having this big vision for himself he has this grand vision the fact that you know he was very clear that my mind is very serious to learn new things and that is the reason all these things actually result in the creation of the magnum opus despite the fact that then milton had become blind even his physical blindness did not stop him Milton used to stay at his study till midnight. So you know Milton is not only a person who should inspire you because he's coming in your exams, but his personality should inspire you to study, to get motivated, to literally love the subject and and make sure that you know you're mastering the craft by doing hard work when you're learning the subject, right? So essentially whenever we are reading Milton, I think we should be thoroughly impressed by this person who he is. He was very strict in following regularity. he would spend time imagine there was no electricity still he would spend time till about midnight in his study with the candle light and despite the fact that his vision was declining that did not deter him that did not stop him so samuel papies the diary writer he was told that you know your vision is declining stop reading and writing samuel papies immediately abandoned it he said no i don't want to write at all my my eyesight is becoming uh, a little like you know it it is uh, fading a little and i don't want to harm my eyes at all but milton had the love for literature had the love for serious production so you can see a puritan who is very purposeful who's very uh, oriented towards making his career as a writer and that's very very inspiring so when i was yet a child no childish play to me was pleasing that's the reason he's called lady christ all my mind was serious to learn and know all my mind was serious to learn and know so when you're writing your phd entrance exam questions also and if in case you're getting a question for example pu entrance punjab university entrance phd entrance always gives this question on evaluating the development of poetry many times they've given this so if you're looking at evaluation of poetry and you're talking about milton you can say that you know the great uh, bard who has written paradise lost the magnum opus written in 12 books first published in 16 uh, 1667 then republished in 12 books uh, in 1674 earlier it was in 10 books you know the, this is how you have to write the answers this shows that you have a lot of knowledge he had already declared that you know when he was a child no childish play was pleasing he was only interested to learn and know and that learning or over a period of time developed in the creation of paradise lost so these are the kind of pointers that add value to your answers also do remember that okay uh, of course he was educated at christ college cambridge therefore he's called the lady christ there he was the lady christ because of his fem like you know many people many records say that he had feminine looks but it's just that he was very fair 
and he would just study so people thought that you know he doesn't want to come out he doesn't want to play those masculine games so for classroom students if you remember myth criticism and you remember we studied about anima and animus so uh, if you remember these terms classroom students you must be aware about the fact that you know milton here is displaying the feminine virtue of being like you know indoor uh, not going outdoor in the masculine pursuits like hunting or going out in the public right so those are the archetypes that are coming here okay so milton's uh, of course this we had discussed already that stoppard uh, that stoppard brook is talking uh, stoppard brook is talking about the fact that you know he is literally the creator of an age therefore in multiple books you have this period not as the age of puritanism or the puritan age but you have this as the age of milton right so the age of milton is there and he is clearly made sure that you know he is developing an entire epoch for himself he has developed an entire epoch for himself and he is one of the last greatest elizabethians the last great renaissance writers right the last great elizabethians the last great greatest uh, english renaissance writers right so here you must remember that for milton despite the fact that he is a puritan for him imagination is important for him uniting pleasure with truth is important and milton trust me he is one of the most realistic so even uh, like you know for example in your subjective exams that you have for phd or for your uh, mphil of course now most of you should not go because it's almost like you know become redundant but if you're going for your phd entrances you can always surprise the examiner by saying milton was a true realist persona why because while the other people were presenting the devil as someone who was gory looking grotesque looking you know devil was described as something who would look like a devil uh, I, there's this uh, there's a show that comes on uh, sony which like you know there's a, I, i think there's a it's it's based on hindu mythology where they they literally have these weird dressings for all the like you know all the deities so you are able to identify that who are the dev uh, the devil demons right because they they are very ugly they are very ugly looking they or or not just ugly looking they'll surprise you with their dressings but milton said no satan is looking satan is someone who is very decent looking he can take the shape and size of any object and that is how evil is evil is tempting if you have a bag over here which contains 1 crore rupees it is tempting even though you know that it is someone else's bag you must complain it to the police or you must bring it to the notice of the authorities but if you know that there is a bag with money you would want to take it evil is tempting so milton is a realistic writer because he is portraying evil as not something which is gory looking which is scary but evil is tempting so he's a realistic writer as well and despite being a puritan he was focusing on imagination he's telling you about the importance of imagination these are all pointers that you must collect and these really make your answers also better and they are also helpful for you in your net exams as well you know the person completely so that you know sometimes when you have those characteristics based questions you are able to answer those properly right and here according to john milton what was the purpose of education this is there very clearly stated in his on education so you know there is this entire topic that you have now in your uh, net exam that is english in india where you look at the development of india english in india you must also remember that you know there are other people like john milton who are writing on the purpose of education right the end of learning even francis bacon talks about it the end of learning is to repair the ruin of our first parents the ruin of our first parents our first par parents are adam and eve that the end product or the end goal of education is to ensure that we are able to we are able to undo the the sins of our first parents and how can we do that by creating something which is everlasting by creating something that according to milton is getting the blessings of god and by blessings of god he means something which is purposeful something that is righteous right that is what he's mean, meaning by regaining to know god aright and out of that knowledge to love him to imitate him to be like him and remember here when he's talking about god why milton is still relevant despite the fact that we are living in in a nietzschean world 
world where we say God is dead. Uh, because you know, when he's talking about him, for him, God is this symbol of perfection. God is this ideal world. God is representing for Milton something that is the pre-lapsarian world. God is representing the pre-lapsarian world for Milton. Pre means before. Lapsarian world. Pre-lapsarian means before the fall. Before the fall, the world was a was an idyllic place. It was a utopian place. It was pure. It was amazing, right? So this is the main motto of education for Milton. For Milton, education is enabling us to go to that pristine world. It is connecting us. We are, and we know that it's not possible, but at least we can try. And in that entire process of trying, according to Milton, we learn so many things about ourselves and about the world. We're able to learn so many things about ourselves as well as about the world. So be very clear that here is a person who is considered like, you know, as an epoch maker. It's the age of Milton for a reason, right? So these all pointers become important. Wordsworth is also writing on Milton for particularly for UPPGT exams. You get many questions on uh, like, you know, how Wordsworth has written about Milton, how Blake is writing about Milton, how Blake is giving you the paintings, like, you know, the, the in illustrations of Allegro, El Penso Rosso. We'll just look at the illustrations also. These questions come in your exams. Thy soul was like a star and dwelt apart. Now, now, you know, Wordsworth is basically talking about Milton. He's saying that, you know, you, Milton, should have been born in this age. This age of French Revolution required you. You were there during the Puritan Revolution and you should have been alive during this revolution. But he also continues to say that, no, you know, maybe a person like you would have perished, etc. So he's, of course, praising Milton. Wordsworth is also telling Milton he's praising him lavishly, right? So those all things are also crucial. Milton, thou shouldn't be living at this hour. Then, you know, then he's saying, then he says, okay, fine, right? Maybe you should be, maybe you should not, right? So you shouldn't be living at this hour. Uh, so clearly we can see that, you know, people like Wordsworth, the romantics were clearly uh, besotted by him. They really loved Milton. They admired Milton. They admired the craft of Milton. Now, why? They admired the craft of Milton because they thought that, you know, that Milton was actually a supporter of the rebellion in the form of Satan. Okay, and God was representing tyranny according to them. But that was a misrepresentation because for Milton, God was supposed to be the hero. Undoubtedly, for Milton, Milton was very clear. He's a religious poet. He's always wanted to remain one. He was very, very clear that God is my hero. Right. He was absolutely clear about this concept. He, he had no doubts at all whatsoever about this. And he wanted others to know this as well, that, you know, God is my hero. Uh, so, you know, there was also a misconception on, on the romantics part because they thought he was supporting Satan. But still, nonetheless, they were praising him. OK, so that is, of course, there. Uh, like I told you, yes, uh, in the previous lecture, we can actually divide Milton's career into three broad categories, early poetry, pamphlet writing and great poetry. OK, so the early poetry has got poetry like Lycidius, Allegro, El Penso Rosso is having poetry uh, or masks like Camus uh, is also having or, or like, you know, a work on Shakespeare. Uh, besides that, the nativity ode is there and on turning 23 then the pamphlets the three most imp important pamphlets on education like we saw repair the sins of our first repair the ruins of our first parents that is the main purpose of education according to Milton you get it directly in your exams right uh, to make sure that the world is in imitation of God that's the purpose of education the second on divorce he himself had a terrible relationship with his second wife right so uh, therefore he thought that yes it is necessary, it is important that two consenting adults who want to cohabit together should live together. Otherwise, it becomes very painful for another person to uh, like, you know, literally spend a life just because you're married and you're not meant for each other. And then, of course, Arago Pactica, which is telling you about the freedom of press, which has been asked in your net exams four times. So, you know, the pamphlet writing is also an important period in Milton's career. 
and finally of course we are having the period of great writings paradise lost a book in uh, earlier in 10 books then me recasted into 12 books then you have paradise regained in four books and you have samson agonists a closet drama so those are of course there uh, but even before his first known attempt at english verse was on the death of a fair infant written in 1628 on the death of his niece and phillips okay this was the first known especially people who are preparing for pgt exams this question becomes important you must remember that this was one of the first finest attempts that he had made uh, because he was writing about his niece and phillips so he spent around six six and a half years just like you know at his father's estate writing um and, and trying to think what does he want to do with his life of course he was clear he wanted to become a writer he was clear that he was uh, a person who wanted to go towards the path of education but what essentially he, he had to do that was a cause of concern for him these are the three wives uh, these are the three wives so you know just like in class 12th we have pcm so you can remember this you have mary powell you have catherine woodcock you have elizabeth minshul now uh, these two wives are very very important because you know with catherine woodcock he was not happy and that is the reason you see that you know he had to write he had this relationship with most of his wives that you know and therefore he was talking about on divorce that if your relationship is not compatible then we might as well break it away and with elizabeth minshew what had happened was in samson agonites uh, samson agonites is talking about how samson is being uh, like you know his his secret is revealed by his uh, by his wife so elizabeth minshew is actually based on the wife's character so his wives are also playing a, an important role. So you have Ma Mary Powell, you have Catherine Woodcock and you have Elizabeth Minshew, PCM. Remember physics, chemistry, maths. So PCM, Mary Powell, Catherine Woodcock, Elizabeth Minshew. These are the three wives that he is having. And each and every wife is having an impact on his writing career, which we'll of course look at right now okay all right so do keep that in mind that you know and here this is very important that you know for six years he had engaged uh, he was not a he was not very clear what he wants to write about uh, so therefore he was getting a lot of clarity by preparation so he was preparing himself he was literally just like you know you've got your civil servant aspirants a lot of my friends were and some of them still are so you know these people are studying for years they're studying for two two and a half years to give their exams and then they're perfecting the craft so similarly when you're talking about john milton john milton studied for six years uh, there's this diary which is still available and in that diary you can see uh, like you know writers of eight different nationality Greek writers, Russian writers, German writers he had studied almost everything if he had studied so many things he was aware about what is writing all about he was aware about the, the craft of writing the way that you know uh, you could write he was very well aware about this this is a question that has now started coming that how many years Milton spent on self-study so he was independently studying for six years and what was the reason he wanted to become a great poet he was always clear what he would write was not something that was a little hazy but he was very clear about his ultimate objective of becoming a great poet he was a very staunch supporter of the cause of the roundheads he was a supporter of the puritan cause he was a very strong supporter and that's the reason during restoration he was also imprisoned for a brief period of time and later he was released but he remained in isolation with the help of his daughters he wrote paradise lost and paradise regain okay so that was of course there he fell out of duty uh, right when the restoration came place so this is of course there and with the help of his daughters right he completed paradise lost so that was of course milton's entire career and that's the reason because he's spanning over you can see the jacobian period the caroline period the puritan period and the restoration period therefore conveniently we call it as the age of milton rather than calling them those specific ages okay now many books that you will read will divide milton's career 
they will divide milton's career into five parts or four parts right the cambridge college period the horton period the period of political and religious controversies which is basically his pamphlet writing and the period of the great epic so many a times this is like you know the division that you have you can just remember the division because they can give you a question that according to major literary criticism because now you have literary criticism also part of your course uh, you must remember that you have your cambridge your horton your ch is there and after that you have your pamphlet writing and the great epic right so it's chpe chpe that is your cambridge period your horton period your pamphlet writing your epics so this is like you know a classification that a majority of books will give you about his career and you must keep that in mind okay now coming on to the first part that is the college period or it's also called the cambridge period okay the college period and the cambridge period you can directly get questions pick the odd one out one might not be from the college period so you can know about this okay on ode on the morning of christ nativity now why this nativity ode was important because this nativity ode was actually celebrating the birth of the son of god jesus christ Christ. It was celebrating the birth of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And this, according to many critics, was actually the germ. This was the beginning. This was the starting of this entire approach that he would have that, you know, he wanted to deal with a religious theme. Okay, so do keep that in mind. This, uh, this is of course something that you must keep that in mind. That he was very, very clear. He was well aware about this fact that you know, uh, in the nativity ode, he was dealing with a religious theme. He was the Puritan. Puritans were having religious themes, as we discussed, right? So we can clearly see that you know, this is the germ. This is the birth. This is the seed for his Paradise Lost. Right. So these are important things that you must remember. OK, this is something that you must remember. He had also written on Shakespeare. This is a direct question that you get that, you know, Milton has written on Shakespeare. So Shakespeare was a person who was being written by John Milton as well. On arriving at the age of 23, on arriving at the age of 23, where he says, unfortunately, I have wasted 23 years of my life and I haven't really achieved anything tangible. I must now get started. OK, so on arriving at the age of 23 on Shakespeare, on the Nativity Ode, these are the three important works that are being written by John Milton, which we must remember. OK, so do keep that in mind. This is, of course, important on the morning of Christ's nativity, on the morning of Christ's nativity. This is an important work that we have. We'll, of course, look at Camus also right now and we we'll look at Lysidius also right now. So, like I said, this, these are the early works. What are these? These are the early works which are being written during the Cambridge period as well as the Horton period. The Cambridge period as well as the Horton period, right? The Cambridge and the Horton period, okay? Uh, the dates do remember because sometimes you get a question on set them in order, right? Many a times you have this question which is set them in order. So always be aware about the major writers, their writing publications are important. For example, Net has given you a question on Thomas. Thomas Hardy set them in order three times. Thomas Hardy only, right? So you can clearly see that, you know, set them in order for most important writers is also an important point that you must keep in mind, okay? So that is, of course, there and we we'll look at all the works. So the Cambridge period or the college period is having three important works, the Nativity Ode on Shakespeare and on arriving at the age of 23. That is the Cambridge period. So maybe in the chart that you're making, you can just write down these are the three works in the Cambridge period, right? These are the three works that are being taking place in the Cambridge period. And the first known attempt at writing was for his niece and Phillips. He was writing for his niece and Phillips. That was the first ever attempt in writing. Now, when we are talking about the Horton period, we have some minor poems like the Allegro and El Penseroso. Very important. I'll tell you why, because this tells us about Milton and his thought process. OK, Allegro is the cheerful man. Penseroso is the thoughtful or melancholic person. Now, according to John Milton, you know, our lives is a mixture of both, but we must be a thoughtful person. We must be Penseroso because if we are not pensive, 
एक्सपेंसिव इज इफ यू आर नॉट थॉटफुल वी माइट टेक रॉन्ग डिसीशंस इफ यू आर नॉट थॉटफुल वी माइट नॉट बी एबल टू टेक राइट वी माइट नॉट बी एबल टू टेक अ लॉट ऑफ बेटर डिसीजंस right jyoti of course i will be providing you with the up pgt notes also so don't worry about it okay all uh, right okay so here now here when you talk about here when you talk about this weekend uh, this weekend jyoti what we'll do is we'll help you out with your up pgt uh, notes as well i'll send one draft so that you can go over it okay so don't worry about it okay so yeah so this is of course there this is something that we must keep in mind that uh, allegro and el penseroso and according to milton being in el penseroso would be important okay oh okay jyoti i've written it down you will have those notes this week uh, okay all right so do uh, keep that in mind and this is an italian word which means a cheerful man uh, this is a work which is written in rhymed octosyllabic couplet octosyllabics octosyllabics right uh, there's an invocation to the goddess of mirth this was a question that was asked so allegro the cheerful man allegro which in latin means the cheerful man is invoking is invoking the goddess of mirth is invoking the goddess of mirth so here you have this pastoral work which is there and you are having allegro so allegro is the happy person allegro is the cheerful person allegro is invoking the goddess of mirth that is a goddess of happiness and el penseroso penseroso is a pensive person penseroso is a thoughtful person Penseroso is telling you that the person is not immediately very happy, and therefore many, many, uh, like you know, many books will even tell you that he is a melancholic person. See, it's not actually melancholia. Pensiveness is like you know, you you deliberate a lot, you think a lot. There is a lot of deliberation that you do before you take a decision. You think a lot, right, and then you take a decision. So that is what Milton is saying. That you know, that's how life should be. He was saying, unfortunately, the kings were incapable of being penserosos, right? The kings were incapable. That was his thought process, and therefore you had such a disaster in the form of a civil war. Had the kings and queens been aware about the fact that you know that the London is requiring change at this moment, then such a kind of a thing wouldn't have happened, right? Then such a kind of a thing wouldn't have really happened. That was his opinion. so allegro and el penseroso these are the two works that you are having look at the opening look at the opening of allegro all right i want you to look at the opening over here that you are having for allegro hence loathed melancholy loathed hated loathed melancholy of cerebrus the blackest midnight born in stygian cave forlorn mongst horrid shapes shrieks and sights unholy find out some uncouth cell where brooding darkness spreads his jealous wings and the night raven sings at there under ebon shades and low borrowed rocks as raged as thy locks in dark cimmerian desert ever dwell so you know he is having he is having the metaphor of darkness but at the same time in the darkness he is wanting to ensure that there is cheerfulness the setting is the countryside right so you can clearly see that melancholy melancholy is something that is getting completely hated it's loathed goddess of mirth is invoked in allegro right goddess of mirth is invoked in allegro so allegro is telling you about the cheerful man and therefore these two are called companion poems why are they called companion poems they are called companion poems because they're telling you about two sides of mankind they're telling you about two sides of mankind the cheerfulness the th uh, the, th the thoughtfulness right the mirth part the merry making and the melancholia that goes along with it so these two therefore are very very famously called as the entire uh, pieces the sets of companion poetry that we are having so do keep that in mind that whenever we discuss about whenever we talk about milton's craft you can see that milton is aware about both the sides milton is aware about virtue and vice both but still he is selecting virtue Milton is aware about the fact that you know with his life he could have been a cavalier cavalier were people who were seizing the day 
right cavaliers were seizing the day but milton was aware about his duties towards his craft he was very well aware about them so that is what milton's belief system was milton says and he he will say this in camo also in the mask camo milton will talk about this belief system that you know cloistered virtue is no virtue cloistered virtue cloistered virtue is no virtue what do we mean by cloistered virtue i do not allow my my uh, my brother or my child or my sister or my grandchildren or my great grandchildren i do not allow them to go anywhere if i'm not allowing them to go anywhere then how is that virtue but if i've taught them moral lessons if i've taught them uh, like you know what is right what is wrong how you need to protect yourself from evil uh, then if you know they're going outside and still they are positive and they're coming back right uh, morally upright that is virtue virtue which is tried and tested is true virtue right what you for example if there is a bag which contains a lot of gold jewelry ornaments and you still don't pick that that is true virtue but just saying oh you know if i if i had a bag i would never pick that that is no virtue because you've never had that practical experience we all keep on criticizing politicians right but milton will say that you know okay it's good to criticize but just imagine if you were in their shoes and genuinely you were getting like you know money just by sitting and just through negotiations would you not take it if you would genuinely not take it and if you would have definitely been there in that position and your answer would have been a no that is pure virtue so you cannot just be like you know sitting over there and saying are bhai politicians are very corrupt whereas half of us who say politicians are very corrupt will take the bribe ourselves right will be more than happy to take the bribe ourselves so that is milton's notion that is milton's value notion and you must appreciate that person right so this of course becomes important and in the conclusion of course milton because he is a puritan and this is a question that was asked in iflu phd entrance also once you must remember that for milton right because milton is a puritan he is privileging penseroso Milton held the values of El Penseroso in higher esteem just like Aristotle is favoring the art of tragedy writing more than comedy or more than epic similarly even for Milton El Penseroso is of higher value right is of higher value the delights of allegro are real and valued right they are real and valued but we must understand that penseroso is representing proper christian pattern you would think you would ponder you would uh, decide you will make an informed decision you will be pensive you will be thoughtful you will not be all happy excited and like you know take wrong decisions in haste So for Milton even though life is a mixture of both Allegro and El Penseroso but at the end he is giving more importance to El Penseroso and this is what happens to all of us when we are younger we are more like um, like you know cheerful happy uh, like the Allegros but when over a period of time you know when we have a lot of experience we have a lot of exposure we tend to become more pensive and that is what milton is also appreciating so allegro and el penseroso el penseroso again an italian word telling you about pensive thoughtful man contemplative you are deliberating this poem is invoking the goddess of melancholy uh, allegro was invoking the goddess of mirth this is also a question that comes in your teaching exams right so here you can see that you know there is peace quietness leisure contemplation and what do we mean by leisure leisure is a little different from pleasure pleasure is more associated with your bodily desires so allegro wants pleasure leisure is leisure is having a very comfortable tranquil life which is at peace you don't have to do anything at all right you're just sitting idle you're just trying to appreciate the life you're appreciating the life giver you are at leisure you are at peace so you know one is devoted to pleasure the other is trying to look at the leisure part of it doing things in a very comfortable manner without any stress imagine if you were studying without the tension how should i study what should i study i can't remember i can't do this so you know milton is actually teaching you is literally like a saint i see a lot of my students uh, like you know who are following buddhism or nishin buddhism etc now this is exactly what what a milton will tell you 
what you're learning over there right so clearly he's telling you about the pleasures of studious meditative life he's telling you the benefits of music you know it's so calm and composing if you're with yourself for a while in your room on your table with music with writing with studying meditating trying to understand and by meditation we don't mean just like your, your yogic meditation but like you know meditating on the things how was my day how can i improve what did i do wrong what were things i appreciate how can i go further what can i do with my life how can i make my life more purposeful right so therefore and and clearly this was a kind of a precursor to the gothic graveyard poetries right to the poetries that we see so even alexander pope is writing eloisia to abelard eloisia to abelard many people consider this to be an inspiration for alexander pope's eloisia to abelard so el penseroso is someone who's considered in high esteem this is william blake's interpretation this is a question you can directly get so this is elagro this is el penseroso that you can clearly see over here okay so it's not something that it's bad or it's sorrowful it's very much at peace here everyone's dancing everyone's having a good time right there's goddess of mirth but here you have you have this pensive goddess there's invocation to god almighty there's purposeful action that is taking place so these are the interpretations that we are having okay so do make that a point uh, this is of course there okay all right let's quickly should we uh, i i'm just wrapping this up because you know nothing gets completed if but i will look at your comments don't worry in in 5 minutes time okay this is of course this is very important in your pdf try to look at this because these are the questions that you get in your exams of putting them in order you can get direct question that you know arcades is a work by so arcades is a dramatic work which was there in 1632 by john milton kamu is also a closet drama that you are having like a mask it's not a closet drama it's a mask right it's a mask kamu is a mask by by uh, john milton so do remember in terms of poetry the dates which are there in terms of non fiction the dates which are there right these are very very important so when you get this pdf this part definitely take it very very seriously okay this part take it very very seriously i will uh, try to like you know even zoom this in oh uh, sorry one second so when you get the pdf try to uh, oh sorry yeah try to look at this because you know this part is very very important okay try and make sure that you're very clear particularly this non fictional part they give you questions they can give you a question set them in order so you must know about this okay so you must be aware about all these details because this is important okay all right now coming to kamu when you're talking about kamu kamu is this pastoral drama which was performed at the ludlow castle this was a question that is asked in your set exams many a times like himachal pradesh set has asked this once right uh, this was performed before the earl of bridgewater okay and milton is using blank verse even in paradise lost he uses blank blank verse and he justifies the use of blank verse he says i don't want any rhyming poetry i want the poetry in blank verse because this is basically trying to justify the ways of god to man people are criticizing god that how could god be so cruel cruel but i am trying to justify the ways of god to men okay so this is of course something that we must remember that it was written at the suggestion of milton's friend okay the purpose was to celebrate the marriage of bridgewater okay celebrate the earl of bridgewater's entry to the presidency of wales and marches as well as there were two three marriages that were taking place simultaneously so kamu was a mask performance that was there before the state so you can clearly see the shows that milton was also well connected politically he was politically well connected at that time just one second excuse me <clears throat> i'm so sorry this weather even though you try your best to protect yourself but something or the other happens okay sorry right so when you're talking about when you're talking about kamu kamu was a performance that shows that milton was also very well connected just like you had your edmund spencer 
who was politically well connected and therefore he was writing the prothalamian similarly you have kamu which is actually written before earl of bridgewater so kamu written before earl of bridgewater pastoral drama it is a mask it is like you know being performed at the ludlow castle and kamu's like you know kamu's message is very simple kamu's message is goodness will be goodness even if it's confronted with evil right uh, so milton would probably say remember that that proverb that we hear one bad apple can make all the apples bad so milton will say no if you are genuinely a good apple you would despite being in bad company you will remain your goodness you'll retain your goodness if you're genuinely good if you genuinely have a good heart if you are genuinely nice goodness is for the sake of goodness according to milton and this is something that he will always even remember like you know this is a theme that even continues in paradise lost he says eve like you know it's nice that eve was tempted because this showed her the reality of a virtue that she was prone to temptation had this like you know had she been very strict and that's what god also wants right god wants you to have this free play god will not dictate you that is what he was trying to tell that you know it's not god's fault it's our fault that is a very important point this is very very important this is what milton believes this is the belief system of milton milton dramatizes the idea that human beings have been given the ability and the freedom to choose between good and evil human beings need to exercise their power of discretion discretion what is good or bad and so long as they choose the good they will remain strong and free so you know clearly here in kamu what is he talking about in kamu he is talking about the fact that how essentially how essentially milton is uh, like you know appreciating the goodness milton is talking about the goodness right milton is definitely very very clearly aware about the fact that goodness is central goodness is crucial and if you're good if you're upright if you're morally upright even in bad situations you will never lose your temper and if you are falling a prey to temptations that means your virtue wasn't something that was strong enough from the beginning so you know milton is of that opinion that if you're good you have a strong faith in god and that faith is unshakable and therefore you will never be driven towards doing anything incorrect so goodness is very important and also the fact that you know you must you must go out and expose yourself to the evil also that is going to give us the correct idea okay moving on to lycidius lycidius is again a very important work that we are having lycidius is a pastoral elegy that was written on the death of edward king he drowned and uh, you know unfortunately milton says that you know how can someone be so cruel because this was not the age for him to die right he was very young uh, and uh, he said that you know he could have had a career just like me but he he passed away so this is an elegy uh, and of course i hope you all remember elegy also called threnody monody uh, elegies are songs which are helping us mull over the transience of life the transience of life at the end of the day whatever we do unfortunately all glory leads to grave right all our glory all glory leads to grave leads to grave so even an ambani this is what oliver goldsmith says in the deserted village these are lines from the deserted village by alexander by oliver goldsmith so here we can clearly see that you know elegies are moments for the poets to talk about the transience of human existence the transience of life sorry so that of course is something that we must keep in mind so here you have here you have like you know in lycidius he is telling you about edward king his drowning that was there because you know he was traveling uh, on a voyage to ireland crossing from the chester bay to dublin he was going to dublin and how he passed away it is a uh, like you know a pastoral elegy which is trying to look at the classical conventions and it's still considered as one of the finest elegies in english language one of the finest elegies that we are having 
okay so that is that there's a digression there's a digression in the voice of saint peter he violently attacks the unworthy clergy whose hungry sheep look up and are not fed there's a digression you might get a question that the digression in lycidius is of saint peter's digression is something that is not a part of the normal flow of events something that is not a part of the normal flow of events is called a digression now here of course elegy or uh, which is uh, like you know on edward king edward king was was a companion at cambridge he uh, he like you know he drowned because his ship sank his ship sank in calm waters in the irish sea right the ship sank in in the calm waters of the irish sea uh, so lycidius is uh, a very important elegy one of the finest that we have for lycidius is dead dead ere his prime you know lycidius died in his prime that is his only bemoaning you know uh, that is what even in homeric because this is a work which is looking at classical which is looking at classical conventions so if you look at if you look at homer's epic homer's epic the iliad homer's epic the iliad is telling you about the the entire the entire pain of priam priam is the father of uh, paris as well as hector and because hector dies because hector dies he's come to achilles to take the body of hector and he says that there's nothing more painful for a father to uh, to to bury or like you know to burn uh, as the conventions may be the child it's very difficult for a parent to see the death of that child it's painful it's extremely painful so this is what he's talking about over here uh, he is looking at the classical conventions that you know the only grudge that he has is lycidius died in his prime lycidius died when he was in his prime and the name lycidius is that of a shepherd in theocrates's seventh idol this is also a question lycidius is based on theocrates's eclogues right theocrates's eclogues he faces death by drowning he faces death by drowning right so the piscatory eclogues piscatory piscatory is related to fish the fish eclogues are the inspiration theocrates's eclogues are an inspiration he is using the classical convention the classical convention in his elegy over here right so this of course is important and you must keep that in mind so this this of course is crucial okay so uh please keep that in mind that you know this is the first period of milton i think we'll we'll almost uh stop here because i don't want to start with something new so don't worry i will share this pdf i will share some additional reading material uh in the next class tomorrow what we'll do is for 15 minutes very quickly we'll complete the puritan period and then we'll go on to the next topic that we have okay and the topics are already given so that is the reason otherwise uh, i would have definitely like you know incorporated the changes so don't worry we'll continue and this i will share it along with additional reading today at the telegram group feel free to uh, let me know if you have any doubts write it in the comment section also okay uh, okay so if you guys have any doubts wo sneha prasad is saying gates uh, admit card is out that's right so okay so that is there or uh, we will we will of course continue uh, over here if you still have doubts because you know we have to cover paradise lost is very important okay and some of the questions which come from paradise lost are also crucial from your examination point of view particularly for your gate exam and for your uh, rajasthan lecturer exam also they'll be crucial and of course from net perspective is also important so we'll cover all of those but uh, like you know till today try to revise the entire puritan period also an additional reading i will give do take a note on of that okay all right so uh, i will stop over here shalini is asking what are eclogues uh, shalini eclogues are these pastoral poems so eclogues over here that we are having these are pastoral poems right these pastoral poems were popularized like you know you had virgils eclogues which were there and pastoral basically means that you know when you're going away from the countryside or oh, sorry when you're going away from the city you're going away from the city you're going to the countryside that is basically uh, like you know your pastoral life so shakespeare also brings the pastoral in as you like it those are the aspects uh, uh Bhu bhuvaneshwari you will get the pdf for this class on the telegram channel okay thank you thank you so much the sleema that's very sweet of you um uh, moriam okay i will just share the email address don't worry 
um otherwise it's my first name and the last name uh, at greedup.co.in okay at co dot in okay yeah maybe I'll, I'll i'll share it okay all right thank you so much on that note um take care bye and please read whatever i'll share on the group today